Coming up next, get ready for a tale of resilience and redemption as we delve into the story of a song trapped on an unreleased album, thwarted by legal battles, and a ruthless manager hell-bent on destroying its creator's career. But you know what? Hope emerges from an unexpected source when a legendary rock star, known by some as the gangster of love, steps in to breathe new life into the imprisoned track. With expert rearrangement, changing the lyrics from anger, pissed off to happy-go-lucky, this hidden gem was transformed into a chart-topping sensation across multiple formats. Man, the aerodynamics for one of classic rock's greatest hits is revealed coming up on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you were ever disappointed as a kid by a toy that you saw in a cool commercial that did not live up to its hype, you're going to dig this channel of deep musical nostalgia. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe below right now, click the big red button, and you know, click the bell so you always know when our latest and greatest shows come out. We also have a Patreon. You can get additional content there that helps us keep it a daily channel and you can become an honorary producer to help us curate this music history. More interviews, more stories telling you it's all about rock and roll. So it's time for another edition of our show, Number One in Our Hearts, where we go in depth on a song that should have been, absolutely should have been a number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100. But for reasons, it came up short. You know, it's hard to fathom how different my life would be without uh, being able to hear music. What's truly remarkable is that there are several renowned musicians who are deaf. Perhaps the most famous example is Beethoven, who began losing his hearing at 26 and was completely deaf by his mid-40s. There are others like Sean Forbes and Evelyn Glennie who either lost their hearing early in life or were born deaf, yet have managed to create incredible music against astronomical odds. Now consider the challenge of not being able to see the world around you. How would you even begin to describe something that you cannot see? How would you express what you can't see in the lyrics of a song? Throughout the history of recorded music, there have been extraordinary musicians who have achieved remarkable feats, possessing an innate ability to feel and express music without the sense of sight. Luminaries like Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, Blind Willie Johnson, Andrea Bocelli, uh, Jose Feliciano, Ronnie Millsap, and bluegrass legend Doc Watson, just to name a few. It keeps Georgia on my mind. Justina, oh, the city. Her letter by my Uncle Fudd, and I rode away on the Tennessee stud. There ain't no getting over me. Among a list of blind musicians who were not as well known as those I just mentioned include a rather obscure artist from Massachusetts named Paul Pena. Uh, his claim to fame was being the songwriter for Jet Airliner. You know, of course, Steve Miller adapted and shaped into one of classic rock's greatest hits. But Paul Pena has an incredible story. Paul's journey was marked by adversity from the very start. Nearly blind from birth and grappling with illness throughout his life, he found solace and purpose in music. Despite his visual impairment, Paul possessed an innate musical talent, teaching himself to sing and play various instruments at a very young age. In the late 60s, he found himself part of a band that landed gigs opening for renowned artists like uh, Grateful Dead and Frank Zappa. His skill and passion for music, that didn't go unnoticed. Blues legends like T-Bone Walker, B.B. King, and Bonnie Raitt recognized his extraordinary talent, and they enlisted him to play guitar in their bands. Seemingly unfazed by any challenge he faced, Paul's love for music remained unwavering, guiding him through life's darkest moments. Uh, having him on stage is like having my very own Jimi Hendrix. That's what Bonnie Raitt said about him, acknowledging Paul Pena's exceptional musical prowess. I mean, his talent knew no bounds, captivating audiences with his unparalleled skills. <laughs> In 71, Pena made the move to San Francisco, immersing himself in the vibrant music scene of the city. He quickly became a fixture in the local circuit, you know, often opening for big names, Jerry Garcia and Merle Saunders. His career trajectory seemed promising when he released his self-titled album, Paul Pena, in 1972. However, a dark cloud loomed over his path to success with the recording of his sophomore album, New Train. That happened the following year. 
It wasn't enough that he was blind. Pa had to deal with a vicious dispute with label owner Albert Grossman, well, famed for managing music icons like Bob Dylan and Janis Joplin, but also notorious for his aggressive and vindictive behavior. Uh, his critics, they called him a barracuda because of his cold-blooded business practices. Grossman's bad reputation was on full display when he refused to release New Train, uh, effectively stalling Paul's budding career to a complete stop. The conflict between Pena and Grossman uh, festered when Grossman told Paul that the songs on New Train were unfocused, and he actually insisted on completely re-recording the album. Paul was mortified. Uh, he'd put so much blood, sweat, and tears into the music that he felt it would be an artistic travesty to redo the record. So, you know, he refused. No way. Grossman was not one to be dictated to, though, so he shelved Paul's record just out of sheer spite. In a desperate attempt to convey the misery brewing within him during the creation of New Train, Paul penned a track that was called Jet Airliner. Uh, the song depicted the life of a musician teetering on the edge of uh, a perilous moment, you know, navigating the rigors of life on the road. Just about to go insane. Steve Miller met Paul Pena through a mutual friend, esteemed keyboardist Ben Sidron. Uh, he was a member of the Steve Miller band and had also performed as a session player on New Train. Ben gave Steve a copy of New Train and Steve, he was very impressed with Paul's lyricism and his musicianship. Steve met with Paul and heard all about the troubles that he faced with Albert Grossman and how Grossman had blocked the release of his record and stalled his career. You got to get on the new train. Following the monumental success of Fly Like an Eagle in 1976, the Steve Miller Band was one of the hottest rock acts in America. keep the momentum rolling, Steve was looking for the perfect song as the lead single for his forthcoming album, Book of Dreams. You know, Steve thought that there were five or six great songs on Paul's album, but he was really, really taken with Jet Airliner, very drawn to it. He thought it was a strong candidate to fill the void that he was searching for to include on Book of Dreams. He wanted to dig in with the author about the sentiment of the track, though. Paul explained to Steve that Jet Airliner was about how he really didn't want to leave California and how much he dreaded going back to the East Coast to record New Train you know, because of how badly he was treated. Steve Miller was completely captivated by Jet Airliner, but he couldn't shake the feeling that it needed to be reconstructed just a bit. Steve mused, and I quote, it was very long, verse after verse after verse, a song of anger. The lyrics needed to be softened to be less angry. Determined to shape the song into something really special, he sought permission to tinker with it. Paul gave him the green light to proceed however he saw fit, so you know, Steve went to work. So he spread the song lyrics out on his kitchen table, you know, carefully typing on oversized sheets of paper. Steve read the first two verses of Paul's song over and over, you know, trying to figure out how to tone down the desperation of the original lyrics and you know, still be true to the song's essence. The opening verse, which was borderline suicidal, that definitely needed to be changed. In seat 42, just about to go insane, I've been down before riding along in this big jet plane. I've been thinking about jumping out the door. Jet plane, I've been thinking about jumping out the door. Steve amended the first verse to this. Leaving home out on the road, I've been down before. Riding along in this big old jet plane, I've been thinking about my home. Out on the road. Now, Paul's original third verse was also in need of a more, shall I say, palatable alteration. Touching down in New England, feel the heat coming down. First thought is, Lord, I said I'd be there, but I couldn't seem to quite get it down. Because I'm going with some hesitation. I got to go and make my way. But there's so many people, Lord, to talk to and a whole lot of debts to pay. Now, Steve Miller revised that to uh, touching down a New England town, feel the heat coming down. I got to keep on keeping on. You know, the big wheel keeps on spinning around and I'm going with some hesitation. You know that I can surely see that I don't want to get caught up in any of that funky shit going down in the city. Paul's rendition of Jet Airliner, that spanned five minutes and 42 seconds featuring five verses. 
Miller, however, with his sights on creating a hit, sped up the tempo. You know, he trimmed it down to three minutes and 20 seconds for the single release. Uh, the album version was a little bit more than that, four minutes and 25 seconds. Now to achieve this, he removed two verses while incorporating additional repetitions of the chorus towards the end. To make it catchier, sing along. Now despite the alterations, you know, Steve Miller for the most part retained the song's signature guitar riff, its catchy chorus, and what I've always believed the highlight of both Paul Pena's original and Steve Miller's reworking of Jet Airliner, which is the poetically profound line, you gotta go through hell before you get to heaven. I love that. As you know, you got to go through hell before you get to heaven. You know, as we continue to break down this song, I do wanna thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses I always wear on here. What are your eyewear needs? Let me ask you that. Whatever they are, Zenny's got your back. It's so cost effective, you can get three or four pair what you would pay for one. I mean, it's just amazing. Check it out today at our info button right up here to get up to 80% off regular retail prices. Zenny Eyewear. An expression that Steve added to Jet Airliner that was not in Paul Pena's original song is the line, gotta keep on keeping on. The origin of that phrase, keep on keeping on, goes clear back to a speech delivered in 1931 by clairvoyant Edgar Case, and later used by folk singer Len Chandler as the title for one of his civil rights protest songs, and he used it again for his tune, Take Me Away From You Train. Keep on keeping on. Bob Dylan also used the phrase in two of his songs, you ain't going nowhere and tangled up in blue. The only thing I knew how to do was keep on keeping on like a bird that flew. Gladys Knight and the Pips encouraged us to keep on keeping on in their number one soul and number four pop hit, I've Gotta Use My Imagination in 73. And Keep On Keeping On is found in John Lennon's old dirt road from 1974. Just keep on the road, you know, you're the white line. Two, three, but you know what, Steve Miller's inclusion of the phrase in Jet Airliner, I think that truly cemented keep on keeping on into our vernacular, into pop culture. I've got to keep on keeping on, you know the... With each verse meticulously tweaked, Miller pieced together a new iteration of the song. After hours of contemplation and rearrangement, he finally had his breakthrough moment. Looking over the revised composition, Steve Miller knew he had struck gold. Yeah, this'll work, it's gonna be great. That's what he said out loud to himself. Steve was confident he had successfully transformed Jet Airliner into a potential hit. Yeah, but in order to deliver a nice and tight single for radio play, the guitar intro, that was edited. And Steve had to cut a version of the song that replaced the, I don't wanna get caught up in any of that funky shit going down in the city, to funky kicks going down in the city. Although anyone I've ever known, they sing the, you know, the S, S word, the profanity version. Jet Airliner was one of the five singles that broke the top 10 for the incredible Steve Miller band, rising to number eight on the Billboard Hot 100 you know, as the lead single from the LP Book of Dreams in 77. Though it should have been number one, right? It's number one in our hearts, that's why we do the show. The Steve Miller revamping of Jet Airliner didn't change the relative anonymity of Paul Pena but the immediate popularity of the song came at a critical time for the hard luck musician. Uh, Steve Miller was really a godsend to Paul Pena. The royalties from the airplay of Jet Airliner, that was his primary source of income while he continued to experience just setback after setback. In 1990, Paul had to completely detach from the music business to attend full-time to his wife, Babe, while she was suffering from kidney disease. Now, unfortunately, uh, Babe succumbed to the disease and died from kidney failure in 1991. In 1997, tragedy struck when Pena's bedroom was engulfed in flames, leaving him with severe injuries. He inhaled so much smoke from the fire that he fell into a coma that took four days for him to come out of. Complicating matters, he battled diabetes and uh, he received a misdiagnosis of pancreatic cancer leading to rounds of chemotherapy. It wasn't until 2000 that he received the correct diagnosis of pancreatitis. Despite his health struggles though, there were rare moments when he felt well enough to record. During these sessions, he explored various genres, including Morna, blues, and Tuvan music. These recordings culminated in his 2000 album, Genghis Blues, which generated some sales and gushing praise from his peers. Mercifully, 
The success of Genghis Blues also led to the long-awaited release of New Train, featuring Paul's original version of Jet Airliner to broad critical acclaim in the same year. And we started this episode talking about how remarkable it was for a hearing impaired or blind artist you know, able to overcome their affliction to make music for others to enjoy. Paul Pena was certainly one of those exceptional human beings. Paul did something else that was truly unique. That began on December 29, 1984. It was on that day that Paul stumbled upon a world of mesmerizing sound while scanning a shortwave radio for a Korean language lesson. Amidst the static, he caught wind of Tuvan throat singing on a Radio Moscow broadcast, a revelation that ignited his curiosity for sure. Simultaneously, he encountered an interview with English musician Jill Pierce, a trailblazer in overtone chanting on KPFA radio in Berkeley, California. <laughs> Intrigued, Paul obtained Jill's recording. Seven years later, though, fate intervened again when he stumbled upon a Tuvan record titled Tuva, Voices from the Center of Asia at a local record store. This serendipitous encounter led him to immerse himself in the sounds of throat singing. He listened to it incessantly. Motivated by this newfound passion, Paul embarked on a journey of self-teaching, carefully studying and experimenting with vocal techniques such as hume, a siget, and kargra. <laughs> In an interview, Paul humorously talked about his vocal metamorphosis. He recalled how he listened to Jill Purse's CD, you know, continuously for a month while driving away many of his friends in the process who couldn't stand listening to him making weird noises, you know, while experimenting with his voice. Eventually, he learned a few of the basic techniques by remembering the styles of some of his favorite songs by blues greats of the past, such as Charlie Patton and Chester Howland Wolf Burnett. Paul Pena, he passed away in 2005. He was only 55. When Steve Miller learned of Paul's death, he had this to say about his friend, and I quote, Paul was a very sweet and interesting man who was amazingly resilient and independent for a person without eyesight. He didn't let this stop him from living a fully creative life and doing the things he was truly interested in. And he was able to achieve his goals in the long run. I'm amazed that Jet Airliner has been at radio for all these years and very happy that the royalties Paul received were able to help him pursue his interests throughout his life. My time with Paul was actually very limited. Just a couple of meetings, a few hours of talk and playing music together. Like ships passing in the night, but we remain linked together to this day." End of quote. He had to wait 27 years, but thankfully Paul Pena was alive when New Train was released to the public. It took so long. It was perhaps his opus. You know, I've gone back and forth listening to both versions of Jet Airliner, and I have to say I have a deep appreciation and a love for both. I listen to both versions for very different reasons, for different moods. I can feel the sadness and despondency of Paul Pena's original Jet Airliner that was likely compounded by his blindness. Without sight, one is even more reliant on the kindness and principles of another human being. There must be unimaginable anxiety and uncertainty. Uh, Paul's Jet Airliner is vulnerable and truly chilling. A Jet Airliner by the Steve Miller Band, it's exactly what it was crafted to be. An incredibly catchy song uh, with an anthemic chorus and a killer guitar group, I might add. When I need a song to play that I can jam along to when I'm traveling down the freeway on a sunny day feeling great about what's going on around me, I crank up the Steve Miller Band version. Play it over and over again. It reminds me of singing along with my dad, you know, driving around with him and his pickup in our little town when I didn't have a care in the world. I, like I said, I love both versions. <laughs> Leave is a comment about this classic song. This should have been a number one smash, I might add. What are your memories of the song? Did you, th did you think it was an original Steve Miller song or did you know it was a cover? Let's talk about Paul Pena as well. Check out his music, I'll link to it below. Let's have a great discussion. If you like our content, we invite you to subscribe below. We would love to have you as part of our community. It's all about keeping the music alive, I'm telling you. Until next time, though, folks, three chords and the truth.